We'll start with the concept first. Let's draw a box. A few more segments. Eight segments. That's good. And delete those points. Rest on ground. So we now have a two point polychain made up of nine points. To check we're pointing in the right direction when we're attached to the fiber, we've also got a little pointer triangle pointing down the Z axis. As mentioned, we're dealing with the concept first. Let's take a two point polychain and add a bit of deformation to it. So we'll add a couple of bones. Let's quickly turn these into joints. Beyond the properties, joints, and we don't want to multiply strength. I want the keyboard to rest. Let's take a top one and move it. So that's okay, just a simple deformation on the two point polychain. Let's add a fiber to this. With a two point polychain selected, effects tools, fiber effects, get that window up. Let's activate it. Let's remove the kink, but let's make it a little bit obvious. Not that obvious. Okay, so we've got a nice smooth fiber there. Time to make our little triangle move up our fiber. So we'll select the triangle, M for motion options, and we want nodal motion here. Nodal motion. The first detail we need to get is the actual fiber itself. So fiber info, double click on that. Well, there's only one here, and that's what we're after. We will take the fiber edge position world and plug it into the position. The next step is to tell the triangle where on this fiber to attach to, and we do this via the little edge integer here. So let's get the integer integer node and plug that in. And you'll see it jumps to, that's our first point, so position one. So our index of zero, and if you recall, there are nine points. Eighth. Well, I was expecting the eighth to uh, hit the end point, but it doesn't work quite like that. And to demonstrate this further, if we go back to the fiber effects panel and add a few more fibers. Spread them out a little bit, match the timeline. There's index position zero. index point of seven, which is actually our eighth point. So rather than go to the top point, it starts again at the next fiber. And up it goes. So we never really hit the end point. So how do we do that? Well, my quick fix is quite simple. Just jump back to modeler, take that second to last point and move it as close to the top as possible. Let's quickly reset fiber effects. Our origin of the triangle is pretty much at the top of the chain here. So now the final thing to check out is the orientation of the triangle. Now I have to thank the always excellent Bryfi77 for pointing me in the right path here. Uh, so what we need quite simply is a cross node and a matrix HPB. And what we're doing, we'll be taking the fiber tangent world into the forward vector. So these are vectors that convert to rotations or Euler rotations, I believe. So that looks pretty good already, but there's one additional step we have to make. And that is also taking this fiber tangent world into the cross, giving the X a vector of one and plugging that into the up. So now what you'll see is as we follow the numbers, Our triangly pointy thing is nicely orientated in the direction of the fiber. One more issue to solve and then we'll be good to go. Now you'll notice that in fiber effects, I have got my two point polychain fiber smoothing set to zero. That means the fiber will hug to each point of the two point polychain. But generally, you'll be wanting a nice smooth fiber, so that will be anything above zero. If we move our pointer down a point, we'll notice it's not actually marrying up with the fiber at all. 
And that is simply because we don't have enough points in our two point polychain. So in Modeler, we'll create a new two point polychain. We'll give it 99 points, same height. And with the added bonus, that should we need to add a point right to the end, it's pretty close to the top anyway. So we've got everything we need in one two point polychain. And just for reference, we have 100 points. I've swapped out our low res two point polychain for our 100 point polychain. Uh, and what I've done also is I've added a scalar which animates from 0 to 99. 99 because the index starts at 0, so 0 plus 1 is 100, so it's 100 points. Playing our animation through gives us a nice orientated pointer which stops pretty much at the end of its fiber. So that's all the boring concepty stuff out the way, let's get on with a couple of examples. So here's some settings as a nice starting point. So I have 20 fibers, we guide radius of 15 mil, uh, fiber width is quite thin, styling, a little bit of splay. Under the bundle settings, we've got a bit of twist. I wanna be scaling this from the ground upwards. If we look at the scaling, you'd expect the scale to do what we're after there, but in a lot of instances, it doesn't do quite what you're after. So another way around this is to use a deformer. Let's press the equal sign to throw a bone on it. Hit R to rest. At frame 120, I want it to look like this. So let's put that in. But at this first frame, I want it slightly higher than zero, I think. F1 on the keyboard, drag, right. Okay, pretty good. Let's make it a little faster. Let's try animating the bundle strength. Okay, let's hide the bone. And that'll work quite nicely for this demo, I think. Displacements and instances first. We have 20 fibers in this, so let's pop over to Modeler. Create a point, F2 to center, C for clone. We're gonna clone that 19 times. So 20 points will attach to each of our 20 fibers. We're gonna save that, we we'll call it points for displacement and send it off to layout. With our points selected, the first thing we're gonna do is add instances to them so we can see what's going on clearly. We're gonna add the triangles to them, but we don't need to see the source. So with the points for displacement selected, P for properties, instance generator, click on that. Add a triangle points. Let's give it maximum amount of points. And let's see them. Okay there. Let's get on with moving our points to each of the fibers. Jump over to the primitive tab, turn off those two. We just need the nodal displacement here. So as before, let's go for the fiber node, fiber info. I'm gonna plug the fiber edge world position or position world into the displacement input. As before, let's get an integer node. Uh, if we type 98, we'd expect it to jump to the end point which you can just about see. So if I was to put 99 in, it would jump to the base of the following fiber. Excellent, so that's all in good shape. I think the best way to show this is to just do it. So let's get an add, take our point index and add one to it so it doesn't start at zero. And we also want to multiply a scalar and a subtract. Point index, we've added one into the multiply node. The scalar, which is the amount of points in our two point polychain, it's 100, but it starts at zero. So let's put 99 in there. Multiply those two together. But at the end of that chain, we just want to subtract one. So now what we should find when we plug this into the edge is all our pointy arrows are at the end of each fiber. We're gonna look at the rotations in a mo. Uh, but uh, just to show this in action, although it's 99 here, you could have any pattern that you liked. So it could be every 50 points, it could be every 60 points, absolutely entirely up to yourselves. But in this case, I want each arrow at the end of the fiber, which I know is 99. 
Finally, let's deal with the rotations. Now it won't work doing it at this stage. Instead, we'll have to apply them directly to the instances. So we'll begin, let's just copy that nodal tree. Let's jump over to the instance generator, go to the nodes, use nodes and paste in. Now we're going to replace what was the point index with the ID index into there. So now we've got exactly the same setup. And as before, we need the matrix. We need the cross fiber tangent world into the forward and also into the cross and 90 degrees perpendicular on the X into the right and into rotation. You probably won't see anything to begin with because the rotation will need to be set to uniform. And obviously the nice thing about this is we have control over a little randomness. I may add a little more spread to this. Just nudge the timeline, okay. After you've done all this and you're happy with the results, just before rendering, I would highly recommend you bake out the motion of these points. Due to the evaluation order, sometimes the displacements are a frame behind what is actually going on. So in this case, with the points for displacement selected, pop over to the in out tab, MD multi baker, select your folder. Once that's done, P for properties, Turn off the nodal displacement, don't need that anymore. Add MD reader and point it to that MDD file that we just baked and we should see everything is nicely in sync and we'll render that way too. While I have your ear, I thought I'd take the time to demo DBNW's Nodemeister uh, and one of their tools found through their Patreon page. They're both absolutely massive time savers, and as we all know, time is money. Definitely go and check those out, the links are in the description. I'm going for a UI nodal vibe in this one, as you just saw me create in Modeler. So I'm now in Layout with my spline selected in Fibre Effects. I'll activate that and turn the OpenGL on. Let's make it slightly thicker. Guide radius of zero, so they all start at the beginnings. Let's add about 10 fibers, that'll do for now. Over to styling, let's take out the kink. We just want a little bit of splay on here. So that's it for the fiber. Let's just bring up the texture and I think we'll make them white. Let's attach the sphere again to each of the end of the fibers. So we have one, two, three, four, five strands. As it were, each strand has 10. So even I can work out that that's 50 nodes that we'll be needing in this case. Select our main sphere and clone 49 times. Now I wouldn't normally go about it by cloning first. I'd clone at the end. I thought it would be worth showing how easy it is to copy and paste nodes where in previous versions of Lightwave it was a uh, massive pain in the arse. Select a sphere, it doesn't matter which one particularly. M for motion options and let's add nodal motion. The first node I want to get from the DBW collection is the one available on the Patreon site. Go to spot, extended spot. So we'll be needing the clone index for this to work. And now let's go to NodeMeister. Let's launch straight into it. NodeMeister graph, let's set a new one. So we need to add a new graph and we'll call that, let's call it spheres. So that's open, that's good. As before, we'll get a fiber node. With our fiber edge position world, we will connect that into the output. As I'm just using spheres here, I won't be needing rotations. So let's start with the other end. Double click the input and we want a new, slightly confusing called output, which kind of makes sense. But here we go. So we take the integer and we'll call it the clone index. Now I'm not sure if this is a bug, but you have to, it doesn't show up but you have to kind of click on it and then it's hidden and then you have to click on it again to show it. Let's go through the same setup. We need a scalar and a multiply and a subtract. 
The only difference between this and the displacement technique is the clone index starts at 1, so we don't need to add 1 to this, we just need to take the clone index and multiply it with its scalar. Now the scalar is the amount of points in the splines. Now I know there's 17 points in each of these five splines. 16 is the number I'm after, as index starts at 0, so that's 16 points. Multiply that together, and as before, subtract 1 from that figure. OK to that. Now we haven't actually wired it up yet, so let's click out of that. Clone index into clone index. Fiber edge position world into position. And hopefully, there we have our node. So to get this node tree on all our clones, let's right mouse click copy. Select all our other nodes, probably by name. Here we go, so two, all the way to the bottom. Right mouse click, paste. There we go. Now, like I said earlier, previous versions of Lightwave, you'd have had to do that one at a time. So the nice thing about this now, we can manually change our scaling. Hmm. Actually, it looks more organic than UI, <laughs> but uh, you get what I'm going for. Now let's say we're not happy with that, we want to change some of the patterns. This is where the beauty of NodeMeister comes in. Going back to our NodeMeister graph, this one graph controls everything. So if we want to change the pattern, we can do that quite simply. And let's not forget as well, this is all procedural. So if we wanted to add more fibers, we can do that. Change the look. Again, just simply cloning spheres, however many times you need to. We'll get what you need. Very nice indeed. And as a last final, final note, remember that if you're animating these, remember to bake them exactly the same as you would displacements. Because we have access to positional data and rotations, we could send this through to After Effects should you want to add, say for instance, a flare to the ends or something better. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this of use. Oh, <laughs>